Well, welcome back to Steve Rob Reviews. Today, it's all about pounding in nails. This is a six inch nail, but this experiment that I'm doing, building this tool, could be used for any size nail you want. I'll be using my Bosch Rotary Impact Hammer. And uh, I have a project on the go where I'm gonna be building a raised bed vegetable box. It's gonna be eight feet by two feet by about 24 inches high and I'm gonna be using about 70 of these nails. So I thought, why not make something that I could use that automatically puts the nails in for me instead of slugging away with a hammer, right? Now, a lot of people might be interested in a tool like this. I've never seen one before. I got all the pieces laid out here. I've started a little bit of the fabrication, but I'll bring you over to the bench here and I'll show you what I got going on. I've got everything all laid out. And first of all, I just wanted to show you that I bought a five pack of these and these were like 13 bucks and I've been using these for a long time to build different tools with when I'm using the uh, SDS plus rotary hammer and all I did was I cut one of these off here's the uh, the uh, end here so I'll show you how that goes now I don't throw these out these are just awesome to use for future projects too so the whole idea behind this is to actually pound a nail in the ground without swinging at it with a hammer. So this is the whole idea. So I've mocked up some of this. This is just a washer on the outside. This is a piece of gas pipe. And all I've done was I welded a washer on the end here. And this is a bushing off of a suspension part. So I just put that in here like this. There we go. Here we've got a valve spring. We've got another washer that's going to go in on top of here. This one here is going to go on top like this. Here's the rod that goes through. Now you can see on the end here, if I show you, it just fits a six inch nail. Now, of course, when you go up to an 8 or a 12 inch nail, it is wider. So uh, you'd have to build yourself another one that's actually wider. Because I really didn't want to go with one that could accept, you know, much bigger and then be wobble, right? So this one just fits a 6 inch. And most of the time, that's all I'm ever going to use. Then we got the spring here. And then we got a nut. Now, this nut, I've drilled the uh, inside out. So it fits this diameter. And this is all going to be welded together. Now, I know a lot of you is thinking this doesn't seem to look like it makes sense so far, but it will. So, the whole idea is to make this work. And I took this bit, this one right here, to make this hole. Like this, right? And then what I like to do is grind this tip down so that it fits properly. And then I'm gonna, so now I'm gonna put this over here, clamp it. Now there is a difference in diameter, so this little nail here seems to make it go nice. And then I'll tack that up and I'll weld that, right? And uh, then we'll move on to the rest of the parts. So the only thing I would say is, you have to have your own imagination to put something like this together. <laughs> And I am sure that this is going to work. And the whole idea will be that it'll be like this when I'm pounding or driving in a nail. And as I get close to the end to actually countersink it in, this sleeve will come down and the rod that comes through the center here, just so you can visualize, the rod will come down through the center and countersink the nail. But while it's going in, it'll be like this. I hope that makes sense. Let's go over to the uh, table and we'll weld up the, uh, the shaft here. And we'll put these two parts together like this inside this little jig. And let's get to it right now. Well, here we go right here. Here's the setup. It's all in there nice and level. And on the back side there, I don't know if you can see, but there, I got the nail in there. So let's turn the welder on. Let's get to it. Okay, 
I'm not going to bore you with showing you how to weld all that all the way around. I'll bring you back when that's all done. Well, you guys take a look at that. Tell me if that don't look half decent there. That's good enough. And I like drilling in a taper so that it actually goes down to about here. Then I'm just welding it here. So when it pounds, of course, it's metal on metal. So, got this uh, nut here first. Then we got this. Then we got this. <laughs> and then we got the spring. And... Uh, then we have to put this collar in here. Come on now. There we go. Now, does this make more sense to you now as you could see it? So the only thing I have to do is I have to compress this piece together like this. And, and then I'll weld this on right here. Like this washer to here, like I did with the other side. And then the only thing I have to do is with this piece here, this nut, is that will give me the depth. So you can see right here, it's, uh, it's flush. So I want to go back about 3 8 to a half an inch. And then I weld this nut on the back side. Right? And uh, that way there, you know, you're not going to slip off the... Uh, the nail while you're pounding it into the wood and then I can set my depth finally with the washer. So let's go over to the welding table and let's weld the washer here right onto here and this is a one shot deal <laughs> it's gonna work no problem I think and then we'll come back and weld the depth with the uh, the nut here. So let's get to it. Okay you ready for this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Look at this rig setup. Took me 20 minutes to figure out how do I compress that in there and well you can put that back together. How do I compress that in there because it is quite tight and uh, actually make it fit. So I found this welding clamp and I'll put it all together. I'll stick it in the vise and we'll see how I do. Well there's the setup right there. I had to actually clamp it in the vise because it's pulling on this side and pulling the back side out so there's a gap there. So I got it in the vise there. She ain't going nowhere. Let's turn on the welder. Let's throw some tacks on. Let's see how we do. Okay, I'll weld that all up, I'll bring it back on the bench, and we'll see what it looks like. Well, this is it right here. So she's all welded up on both sides. Nothing fancy, guys. I'm not a professional welder or anything. But uh, there it is right there. And the rod goes through like this. So, of course, you wouldn't want it like that. You want to have it come back about a half an inch. And then I'm going to weld the, uh, the end on, the nut right to the washer there. So you guys have a good idea now. If I take this and just compress it, you could see how that is going in. So when you come to a piece of wood and you want to countersink your nail, well, this will compress. Now, guys, that is pretty stiff. Like, I mean, I'm really cranking on that to, to get it to move in. So I figure about... 3 16 I'm sorry 3 8 deep around 3 8 deep and that way there you can countersink so all I have to do now is just go over to the workbench back this off to about right right there weld that nut on and we're done so let's go over and weld that on right now well for this particular weld here I'm gonna have to hold it and just kind of center it the best I can because I have to tack it here all the way around and then I have to weld the shaft on here. So let's just try that and see how we make out. Because you can see there's a little bit of slack in there, right? Okay, let's turn the welder on let's get to it. There we go. 
that's all I needed was one tack there. And of course it pulled it up on the other side, so I'm going to have to stick that in the vise, push it together, and then weld her up. I'll bring it back and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, there she is. That's it. It's all welded up. Weld around here, weld it around here. And if you want to know how I found the depth, how to set it, is I just put this nut in here like this, and then when I put it down, it set the depth. So that's a depth right there, and this is about maybe a little more than a quarter of an inch, and that'll be fine like that. So when you're, hope you can understand how this works, so as you're pounding in your nail, it holds it in there, and when you get close to your wood, this collar will back down to set the nail into the proper depth. So I'm going to bring this back in a second here and show you it all painted up. And I'm going to explain to you why I'm using nails and not these screws. Well, there she is. She's all done. What do you think? Guys, is that just the cat's meow or what? I am sure that is going to work. And uh, I'll explain to you why I don't choose to use the screws and it's for one reason only these are 37 cents these are two bucks so when you're just pounding four by fours on top of each other a six inch nail is perfectly fine and I am going to show you this being done in the future I'll be using this that project is coming up real soon so if you're interested in watching that project on me actually using this nail pounder uh, you know, stay tuned, it's not going to be far off. And if you run across this video, well, I'll put the link down below in the description below or one of them boxes at the end of the uh, video. So thanks for joining me here today. You guys let me know what you think of this. Now I am positive this is going to work. You guys let me know if you think it's going to work. And stay tuned for me actually putting it into use. You guys haven't seen this channel before? Well, you're welcome to subscribe. Come back again. And let's have some more fun. Cheers.